My dearly beloved in Christ, you know that Advent is a season of preparation, quiet preparation, extra prayer, meditation, preparing to celebrate the birth of our Lord. And sadly, in the world, so many people spend it in uh, hustle and bustle and noise and shopping and premature celebration and office parties and so forth. And we must do all we can to avoid that spirit of the world and keep our Advent a quiet spiritual preparation. Certainly, there are necessary preparations for Christmas, but let us not be caught up in that spirit of the world, which again is one of dissipation and distraction during the important season of Advent. One of the things we should reflect upon in our meditations, our readings during Advent, is the coming of our Lord into the world the incarnation of the Son of God and the love of Almighty God to send into the world His only begotten Son to redeem us. But there is also a second coming of our Lord at the end of time, and that is why we read that Gospel today. Now, you note that last Sunday we had the same Gospel roughly, although much longer, from St. Matthew. And so today we have the account of St. Luke, which is shorter, but nevertheless the same prediction of the signs that would take place at the end of the world. How the, the stars will fall from heaven, the moon, sun and moon will not give their light, and the earth will be consumed with fire, will be the end of the world, and then our Lord will come to judge. And He will judge at the last judgment all mankind all of those who have ever lived. And it is interesting when, the, when our Lord ascended into heaven on the clouds, imagine the apostles enthralled at this beautiful sight of our Lord rising up to heaven to take possession of His kingdom. And as they gazed, an angel said to them, why do you look up into heaven? Jesus who has been taken from you will come in the same manner as you have seen Him going up into heaven. And our Lord said this on other occasions, how He would return at the end of time on the clouds with great power and majesty. From St. Matthew chapter 16, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then will He render to every man according to His works. Our Lord again in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew talks about the judgment that will take place at the end of the world. And he says that he will sit and judge and all nations shall be gathered before the Son of Man sitting on the judgment seat. And he will divide the wicked from the good. The good from the wicked. And he says the wicked shall go into everlasting punishment, but the just into life everlasting. We also read in other places in Scripture how the wicked, when they see our Lord coming to judge, they will cry out, hoping that the mountains will fall upon them and cover them to hide them from the wrath, the just anger of the Son of God. Let us prepare well for judgment that we will deserve to receive a different kind of judgment than that given to the wicked. That our Lord will say to us, come blessed of my Father into the kingdom prepared for you. So that is why on the first Sunday of Advent, and the word Advent means coming, we have this gospel of the judgment, of the last judgment at the end of the world, because we are preparing for our Lord's coming. And notice that in the first coming of our Lord into the world, in Bethlehem, He came in poverty, in weakness as a little child, in suffering, in humiliation, being born in the stable among the animals. But in His second coming, He will come with great power and majesty. And when our Lord was brought before the Sanhedrin in the hall of Caiaphas, and Caiaphas demanded, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us if thou art the Son of God. And our Lord knew they would use this to condemn Him. And He said, I am. But henceforth, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and majesty. So it was a warning to them, but also a reminder 
that he will come again, not in the humiliation and the weakness where he allowed himself to be taken by his enemies and put to death, not in suffering and in poverty and humiliation, but he will come with great power and majesty and authority. And the angels will sound the trumpets and the bodies of all of those who have ever lived will rise from the dead, be reunited to their souls, and all human beings will be gathered together in one place. And of course, we can think to ourselves, well, how is that even possible? But indeed, it will happen. It will take place, and the sins of all men will be made manifest. And God's judgments will be seen for what they are, perfectly just. Everyone will be compelled to acknowledge that our Lord was perfectly good and merciful and gave to every human being many opportunities of grace and of saving one's soul. And the wicked will be compelled to acknowledge that they are damned because of their own fault, their own rejection of grace. We will also see at that time, at the judgment, we will see why God allowed the crosses and the trials that come to the elect to those who love and strive to serve God, why they suffer, why they experience the cross. Everything will be clear. The example has been used before how if you look at a beautiful tapestry, and if you look at the back, there's no order to it, and there's threads going here, there, and everywhere. But if you look on the front side and you see the beautiful picture that has been made by the skilled artistry of those who made that tapestry. So in this life, we're like on the backside. We don't see God's plan. But at judgment, we will see and acknowledge his perfect justice and wisdom and also his loving providence for us. How God has arranged everything in our lives for our good, for our salvation, for our spiritual welfare. So let us during Advent think about that twofold coming, the coming that already took place in Bethlehem and how our Lord came in weakness and poverty and suffering, but also his second coming that will be at the end of time and prepare for that. So Advent is a time to think of both. And that's why Holy Mother Church gives us this gospel at the beginning of Advent. Indeed, our whole life is a preparation for our judgment. And the saints always kept that in mind. And they thought to themselves, I should live this day as though it were, be to, it were to be the last day of my life and that afterwards I should be judged. And that is a good way to live every day. To live it as though it were our last and to live it as though we were going to be judged at the conclusion of that day. Because one day will be our last day. So keep in mind judgment. Keep it in mind always. And it will help us to live in a manner pleasing to God, so that when judgment does come, we will receive a merciful and kind judgment from our divine Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.